Hello and welcome, Charlie Pangas here. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to create a distressed graphic using Illustrator. So basically here's the way it's gonna work, guys. The artwork that I'm gonna to distress today was actually created for my good friends over at Bella Canvas. We took two of their wholesale styles and we created this graphic for it and we wanted to create this distressed look, which is very, very popular, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. So I'm gonna clear things up for you guys in case you don't know how to do it. So we're gonna hop into Illustrator right now. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it. And you guys already know how I work. I included all the textures below for for free so you guys can go there right now download them before you start this video and just enjoy the process guys anyway let's hop into illustrator and get started and at the end of this video you guys have to check out bella canvas's video i filmed with them um, they actually print this design so if you want to see that process you which you should it's awesome go to their channel check it out let me know what you guys think and let them know what you think. They need some love too, okay? But anyway, we're gonna get to this uh, artwork now and we're gonna distress the crap out of it. We're gonna make it look grimy, gritty, textury, if that's a word. You know what I mean, let's get started. So I have Illustrator pulled up right here. So what I wanna do is move it to the left real quick because I'm gonna go to my folder with the retro textures. And what I wanna do is just drag the grease one into Illustrator. So we're just gonna drag it on a completely new tab there it is, perfect. Now we're gonna go to the print specs and do the same thing. We're gonna drag that where the gray area is up there without the tab. And once you drag it in, it's gonna create a brand new tab for it. We're gonna go ahead and maximize that screen or enlarge it, whatever you wanna call it. And now what I wanna do is go to the grease one. We need to do a few things before we can actually use it on our design. Once you see how I do it, your mind's gonna go, Pfft. it's gonna blow up because it's really easy. So before we do anything with these textures, what I like to do is I like to image trace them just to create an outline um, shape I guess you can say out of these and that's just my process what we could do instead is add colors to our swatches and change the color like I have here I have white and black in my swatch palette and I can change the colors easily that way but I like to make it into an actual outline vector I find it easier to work with but again that's just my preference so now what I want to do is just make sure it's centered to my artboard and then I'm just gonna go up to image trace and there's one key element here that I like to use um, to make this all come together smoothly I like to go to this little image trace panel here and from there, we just want to go to advanced and go to the little drop down menu. We're going to go to ignore white and we're not going to touch anything else, guys. That's it. It's as simple as that. We're going to ignore white. We're going to expand that. And as you guys can see, now it's an outline. And if I drag it to the gray area, you can see that it has no background. The next thing I want to do is go to my next texture and do the exact same thing. Image trace, let it load. <laughs> and then what you want to do is go to ignore white, let it load and then expand. And now what we have is this expanded texture that we can change the color on. We, we could do basically anything with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the grease splatter over to our design. We're just gonna lay it on top. So here is the design, guys. When you add texture to art, it just adds a whole different element to the art. It makes it look aged, which is something that I really love. So um, I'm not saying that all art needs texture because some art you can actually ruin it, quite frankly. So you have to really kind of just look at the art and see if it really will work good with texture. Um, I texture anything though. I just love texturing everything I see, but you don't have to do that. We're just gonna drag this over the actual design. And what I wanna do is actually, I wanna copy it real quick or cut it, and I wanna add it on its own layer because I want the textures to sit on their own layer. So we're gonna paste that in place, and I'm gonna name this texture one. So I'm under the layers palette here, and I just created a new layer, um, and I actually pasted that on that layer, and I just retitled it texture. And we wanna do texture one, not just texture. So now I change that to texture one. We see it on the layers palette as red, and if I hide that, it will disappear. It's as easy as that. So now what I wanna do is just kinda of drag it in place. We're gonna go ahead and change the color to white. So I'm gonna go up to my colors here and change it to white. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna blend in with the design. That's actually not white. We need a perfect white. What we could do is we could resize it, we could tilt it, we could do anything we want. It's really up to your imagination. Um, I would suggest playing with it as much as possible just to see what looks best for your design. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna keep tilting it until I'm happy. We're just gonna call that done, okay? So this is pretty cool. It looks really nice and grungy already. Now we have one more texture to add. So before I even go grab that other texture, I wanna create one more layer and I'm gonna name this texture. We're gonna name this texture two and we're gonna actually drag that below 
layer one, which is our design. So we can name that design. Here's the way it's working, guys. I have one texture laid on top of design and I'm laying the second texture under the design and the layers work in order. So whatever is first will be on top of everything. Just remember that, guys. So um, we have texture two at the bottom of design and we're gonna make that black ink, okay? So it's gonna basically make it look like the design is kind of breaking up a little bit and I'll show you what that looks like. So we're gonna go to the other texture, which is this print specs and um, we're gonna drag that to the actual layer. Um, we need to cut that and paste it onto texture two and we're just gonna recenter that. And basically I'm gonna rotate it a little bit until I'm happy with it. Resize a little bit more than that. So as you guys can see, now it looks like it has speckles um, and it's kind of looking like the design's breaking up, like it's super worn out. Um, but I don't like how it's too scattered outside of the design perimeter. So what I want to do is I want to select the design and I want to go to the eraser and I'm just going to actually make the eraser big. So basically anytime you create a new layer, it's going to have its own color, which you can actually change. Right now this is a, uh, right now texture two is a uh, highlighted green. It's going to highlight a specific color. So just know what color it is and that's how you can easily tell what you're selecting. So I'm clearly selecting texture two because now Next to the little circle on the right of the name, it has a little green. Um, it has a little green indicator, um, which tells me which uh, color this layer is. So anyway, now that I'm selecting it, I'm just going to go with the eraser tool on the outer edges and just erase things that I don't want on the outside. Okay? You don't have to take that much time doing this, um, but I definitely suggest spending a little time going around the edges just to clean it up a little bit because it doesn't need to be so wild, if that makes sense. So um, now let's go ahead and see what it looks like much better. We don't need it to be so intense, so that looks a million times better. So now what I want to do is do the same thing for texture one. I want to highlight it, which is going to turn red because again, the indicator on texture one layer is red. So that's how I know what I'm selecting. And now I'm going to go to the eraser again and just erase what I don't want. We're just going to clean it up a bit just so it's easier to work with for the print shop and let it do its thing. It might load a little bit because it is kind of a large texture. Um, and then we're just going to erase it where we don't want it. So that's basically all you have to do, guys. What we did is we dragged our textures into Illustrator. We image traced both of them, ignoring white under advanced options or advanced settings. And then we dragged it on our design and basically created two different layers for two different textures. And we made one go under the design, which is the black ink. And we made one go above the design, which is the white ink. It's simple as that. And those orders can be changed depending on what kind of effect you want. So there you have it, guys. That's how I distress graphics using Illustrator. That's just one method, though, keep in mind. There's so many other methods out there, and I will definitely cover them on this channel. So you guys definitely have to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Um, but guys, definitely check out Bella Canvas's video. Um, I went to LA and we filmed a video on them printing this design. I talk about the art process a little bit more. It's a really, really good video. So make sure you guys go to the link below, click on it, and go show them some love by watching it, hitting the thumbs up button on their video and subscribing to their channel. That does it for me guys. My name is Charlie Pangus. If you guys enjoyed the video, of course, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. Guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.